Hey, 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 Yarn Life Show. Uh, Selena here and Jess here for episode 10. Can you believe it's been 10 episodes? This is this is episode 10. I can't. We should throw some sort of like party, I think. Oh, here's little confetti that you can't see. <laughs> Invisible confetti. No, but it is really exciting. I'm so glad that, that we've been doing this together for 10 episodes, season one. And I'm really excited about the topic today. Today, the subject is one reason your yarn business is failing or it will fail if you don't get this nailed down. And Jess is the perfect person to be talking to about this. Uh, and so we're going to dive into that in just a little bit. So first, thank you all so much for joining the Yarn Life Show for your daily dose of fiber. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for notifications on every episode we wear. Air. I said wear last time too. <laughs> we can wear episodes now. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. Actually, you probably can wear episodes. So we also want you to get tangled up in our fun, upbeat, educational Facebook group that's dedicated to the hanks, skeins, balls, and cake that we love the most, and to the people who make the most of them, like Jess here, because yarn is life. Now, back to wearing the episodes. Today's episode is actually sponsored in part by you good viewers, everyone watching this episode today. So please come on over and check out our Yarn Life swag shop to pick up a token tea, tote, or mug today so you can wear some of those, because every purchase you make there not only gives you great products that you're going to love it also helps us to create more great episodes here on the life sh yarn life show uh bring on even more amazing guests and give you more great content like this episode today you can find our shop link in the show notes section today uh, i think it's already there but don't click until you know after you watch this whole episode now, today's episode is also sponsored by the Yarnpreneur Academy. And the Yarnpreneur Academy helps members to build a yarn business that they love with courses, resources, and expert guidance that creates actionable steps for success. I love that because it really speaks to what people want to do when they start a business. So to see if you're a Yarnpreneur or to submit your application to join today, please click on the site link in the show notes section today after this airs. And the Yarnpreneur Academy is um, is created by, or was created by, Jess, who's who's our, our feature host today. And um, that brings me back to our episode. So today's episode, episode 10, is a question that most of us get wrong. I know I got it for a, mm -hmm. wrong for a very, very long time, and so many people do get this wrong. Um, and people get this wrong not only in the yarn industry, they get this wrong in any business, but we're yarn lovers. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So the question here that we're going to be talking about is why are you in business? And we don't mean because you love it or because it's your passion or because you love yarn or because it puts some extra money in your pocket. That's not the why that we're talking about today. So today we're going to go much farther to answer this question. And to do that, we are taking a few pages from Simon Sinek's revolutionary book, Start With Why, How Great Leaders Inspire Everyone to Take Action. So again, welcome back, our guest, Jess. Welcome Thank back you. to the Yarn Live show. We've we've missed you. We, we missed you last week, and so it's really great to have you back here. I missed you guys, too. It felt really <laughs> weird not being on the show for two weeks. It happens. It happens. It happens to the best of us. You know, <laughs> life happens. <laughs> so I'm always so excited to play host, especially on topics that I know we're both so passionate about, and this is something that we've had so many conversations on. Yeah. So... I wanted to start this episode uh, because it's such a gripping title. Hopefully a lot of people that are viewing in are like, all right, get to the, get to the nitty gritty. Um, Jess, can you tell us a little bit about this why philosophy? Um, just kind of in your own words. I like to think of, I, I like to equate whenever I say the word why or whenever we're talking about a why, I like to equate it with the word purpose. Um, I think it's the perfect kind of, word that people understand it kind of helps people get past the barrier of well why do you keep saying the word why <laughs> um i think if you kind of think of them as the same thing then you've pretty much got it figured out um of course it goes a lot deeper than that but at the end of the day your end result should be you should be able to articulate your purpose and not only that but you should be able to incorporate your purpose into your business so, you know, one of the things that um, people misunderstand a why as is sometimes they think it's a mission statement. Um, and to me, a mission statement is outdated. Um, 
it's it's not it, it it feels static it feels like yes this is what we say we're going to do and like that's it and then somebody puts it up on the website and then you forget about it like forever um that's that's those are my issues with the mission statement um and i think a why is so much more you have to feel it and it and it has to like it has to grip you and it and it has to grip you as the business owner everyone's why is going to be different everyone's purpose for starting and operating their business is going to be different and that means that you have when you have that purpose when you have that why you have a strong foundation and everything that you do in your business everything that comes after you figure out your why needs to point back to it and i think that's that's the big difference that i think of when i think of a mission statement and a why or a purpose um you know a mission statement is i feel very much like a pr thing it's like a hey look at us here's what we're trying to do um and then all of the actions you take don't really point back to that but when I think of a why or a purpose, it has to be, it is very much linked to every single action you take in your business, every project you take on, every product you build, every opportunity you evaluate, um, every, every time you try and network with someone, every, you know, every relationship you, you take on, um, all of those things uh, should point back to your why and they should be you know kind of connected in a way that means that no matter what part of your business I'm looking at I should be able to guess what your why is like I should be able to guess why you're here you know what are you trying to accomplish what is your purpose and I think that's that's the biggest thing that I try to get across when I first teach people about a why because the the initial reaction is to go for something more like a mission statement mm -hmm. um even if that's not what they're thinking in their head but the initial reaction is always like okay i'm going to tell you what i'm doing for my business and it's usually either um i'm doing it because i have some extra time and i want to make some extra money doing something i'm passionate about which there's nothing wrong with that but if you want to be a really successful yarnpreneur, if you want to have a platform, if you want to have a foundation to build a, a, a business that you can grow, um, you need to really think about what you're doing here and your purpose um, beyond, I want to make a few extra bucks doing something that I don't hate instead of just going to McDonald's and flipping bur burgers, you know? Um, <clears throat> I think that that purpose in I'm choosing to do something I love to make money. Yes. Mm -hmm. But why, you know, why am I sp choosing to spend? Cause a lot of times actually pretty much a hundred percent of the time, it's much easier to just go out and get a job. The, the, this being an entrepreneur on any level, is not for the faint of heart. It's not for people who just want to make some extra money on the side. Um, so if you really truly want to have a successful business that you can count on, that you can rely on, that you can grow, um, that provides for you and you provide for it, um, you have to have that foundation in place. You said a few things that I really want to circle back around to because I think that that's the reason this is such a gripping topic. And I'll, I'll start back from, from, from a place that I think will make a lot of sense to a lot of people. You're absolutely right. Whenever you start a company or whenever you work for a company, there is that mission statement. You know, we provide great sandwiches. Yes. <laughs> and it is so much, you know, uh, it is so much deeper than that. And, and the reason it's so much deeper than that is because if you just want to make a couple bucks here and there, then you can find strategies for success. If you just, if, if this isn't something that you want to have some real success at, if you know, and, and real success means you can, you can get up every day and, and kind of predict how your day is going to go. You can kind of predict how your, how your company is going to go, how successful it can be. And I say predict because that's absolutely what you can do when you fine tune 
this is why I'm in business. This is why I'm doing this particular job. This is why I started this particular company. And this is this, these are the problems my company is fixing. These are solutions my company is answering. And I, I made a note of this yesterday when we were chatting, Jess, and so I wanted to mention it here. Um, and this is a distilled version of my rant yesterday, but it was basically when you have a why you are in business, why are you doing this? Why is this important? Then you're not going to allow the market to dictate your next move. You're not always going to be scrounging. You're, you're not always going to feel 10 steps behind. You're not always going to feel like everyone else is successful but you. Because so many people do feel that way. They're looking for success They're from other people. Oh, Jess is so successful because, because of all these superficial things. Like she has more likes than I do, or it looks like she has more sales, or she's using better yarn, or she's doing that. Like, and so when we copy other people, that's not a good business. That's not a good reason to be in business because that's just where am I going to get my next dollar? But if you dictate a what, why am I in business? Well, I'm in business because fill in the blank, and we'll talk about that in just in, just for a minute. But that gives you some security and that you're not allowing you're you're not going to be bending to the market because you know deep down why you're doing what you're doing, and so you can have some more long-term success because, and, and this is something I love throwing this in because whatever you do is going to pass that salary test. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> the salary test I love. And I, and I also love thinking about, and I was thinking about this, you know, as, as you were just talking, um, a, a good way to think of your why is as a compass. Um, mm -hmm. I think, if you don't have that compass, if you don't know where you're going, if you don't know what direction you're headed, if you don't know where your path is trying to take you, well then, if you don't know where you're trying to go, well, hey, maybe you can take the right path. Maybe you could take the left path. Maybe you'll turn around and go backwards. You know, mm -hmm. that's what it means to kind of look at other people. You know, that's what you're doing to your business. Every yes. time you look at someone else and you're like, oh, well, she's successful on Instagram, so I better turn around and get an Instagram because it works for her. And then instead, what you're really doing is you're taking away from something that maybe could have been good, but you're spreading yourself too thin and you're going all over the place. And those are the kinds of things that without, without a clear why, without that clear foundation and that compass and knowing what direction you're actually trying to travel in, um, it's very easy to be swayed. Um, it's Absolutely. very easy to lose your, you know, lose your direction, not know which way you're going and just kind of take a side path and then get completely lost. And that's what usually derails, you know, beginning yarnpreneurs, especially um, the focus is not there because the confidence isn't there. Um, again, and this is why I started the Yarnpreneur Academy. This is what gets me so fired up is those people who are just starting, who have no one to tell them, have no one to tell them that they need to find a direction. So mm -hmm. obviously, you know, instinct tells you to look to other people who are successful. And then that becomes a problem because some of the people who are successful or may look successful, but may not really be as successful as they look, or they could be really successful because they stuck at it for years and years and years. And it's not something that you're going to get overnight. And then right. people get discouraged and then they either find another shiny object or they quit. And both of those things kind of make me really disheartened because someone who has a lot of talent, who has a lot of drive, who's really excited about being a yarnpreneur and could have a lot of success if given the right tools um, is being thrown off track because they're, they don't have guidance. And right. Again, this is why I started the Yarnpreneur Academy because I recognized, um, to be honest, because it happened to myself. Yeah. Um, and it happened to a few people that I talked to and was kind of close to and was able to kind of, you know, see beneath the facade of social media and, you know, like what their success actually looked like and, and talk to them and realized how hard they worked or realized how they still didn't have everything figured out and they still needed help. And um, that was when I was like, all right, 
somebody needs to do something about this because there are so many people out there who really want to and have the talent, you know, the creative talent to make a business out of this, make successful livings. Mm -hmm. And they're failing because they don't have they don't have a foundation and they don't have a direction and they don't have guidance. They don't have the tools and the resources and information um, that they need to, to really build something that they can rely on, that they can predict their income, that they know, Hey, it's not going to be, I'm not going to have a thousand dollars in sales one month and then two the next month, you know, that you have some sort of steady, um, business that you can actually rely on and, and pull an income out of. I love that. I, I'm sure because this is a new concept for me. I've really only known it since, since I read the book by Simon Sinek. Um, and so I just wanted to briefly talk about what the celery test is because I think it'll make sense to yeah. people who are listening in that are like, yeah, that all sounds great, but I still have no idea. So the celery test, think about it this way. I love analogies. I talk in analogies all day. But, and so this is why it spoke to me so much. The, so the celery test is essentially your why. Imagine you're going to the supermarket and imagine you are a vegan and you have a very strict vegan diet. So start out with 20 things on your list. M&Ms, chuck roast, chicken, uh, cow milk, dairy cheese, um, celery. So you've got all these things. Ice Sorry. cream, put ice cream on the list. Ice cream. <laughs> Cow milk ice cream, yeah. So you've got all these things on your grocery list, right? These are all things that people love. I love pizza. I love M&Ms. I love this. I love that. So if you go around and you look at what everybody else is grocery shopping for, everyone's going to tell you, oh, I always shop for this. I always shop for that. And every single person you go that goes to the grocery store is going to tell you something totally different. But if you are a vegan and you have a strict vegan diet and that's who you are at your core and that's who you want to be at the end of the day and that those are the choices that you want to make, then you're going to look at that grocery list. You're going to look at everyone else and you're going to go, well, Jess buys M&Ms, but that's not right for me. And Selena buys ice cream, but that's not right for me. And I'm a vegan and so-and-so buys chuck roast, but that's not right for me. So when you understand your why, when you understand who you are, when you understand why you're in business, think about it like a grocery list then you know exactly what to buy. You know exactly what to put in your body. You know exactly what you're shopping for. So it cuts down on time. And more importantly, you know what not to buy. What not to buy, right, because you understand who you are. So I wanted to say that because it gets it, it primes me for your next question, Jess. So with all of that about the why, which there's still like, it's just such a fascinating topic. I love it. Can you tell us what your why is, especially at the Yarnpreneur Academy, and tell us um, how did this whole why philosophy change your business and your why? So my why at the Yarnpreneur Academy is to help yarnpreneurs build successful businesses that they love. And the reason it rolls off my tongue is because I say it about 25 times a day. I'm just kidding. That's a, that's a little overestimating. But I do say it quite often, uh, both out loud in live videos a lot, uh, in recorded videos, and just um, I do say it in my head, actually, you know, when I'm thinking of, you know, what comes next? What am I working on? Um, when I look at my task list, I, I actually do this when I look at my task list. I say, okay, I'm feeling really overwhelmed right now. I have a lot of things to do for the academy. Um, which of these things is priority if my goal is to help your entrepreneurs build successful businesses that they love? Yes. Um, and it makes it very easy for me to table things for later and to determine which ones should be priority based on the fact that my goal is to help yarnpreneurs build successful businesses that they love. Um, <clears throat> so I, I actually solidified my why, um, I think it was around four or five months ago. Um, so it really hasn't been that long. But I can tell you that the difference between before I like because before I knew I needed a why and I was kind of still um, just kind of trying to figure out what it was and I couldn't I couldn't really quite settle on words that felt right. Um, I, I couldn't I just I, it wasn't coming um, and 
after a while and after some brainstorming and after a lot of kind of sitting down and, and, you know, just getting a lot of stuff out on paper and then crossing a lot of stuff out that just didn't feel right. I was able to kind of narrow it down to what it is now. And when I, the first time I wrote it out, it, it just clicked. It just felt right. I said, this, this makes sense. This feels good. This, this is a direction that I can go in. This is something that I can use. Mm -hmm. Um, Because a why is meant to be used. You know, it's, it is meant to be said, it is meant to be shared, it is meant to be communicated in your branding, your messaging, your products, everything that you do should scream your why. And I know that the difference um, in my business uh, from before I had this foundation to now is, is shocking. Um, I've completely changed, you know, the content that our members receive in the members area and not only the content itself, but the way it's delivered. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've completely changed the way I market. Um, And because of this, I've been able to double my revenue the past two months. Mm -hmm. Um, I did not think that was possible. Um, From such a small, like literally just from a sentence. Um, but it wasn't just the sentence because if I had created the sentence and just let it sit up on a shelf, none of this would have happened, but I created the sentence and then I made sure that everything I did from then on pointed back to it. Um, you know, it, it informs the type of articles that I share on our site. Um, the, you know, the live Q and A's that I do, I make sure that I ask Uh, in the Facebook group, what people want to talk about so that I know that I'm picking and talking about topics that are actually going to be helpful for people. Mm -hmm. Um, I make sure to communicate quite often. I put up polls and questions and all kinds of things. I'm always, always fishing for what my audience wants. Um, Not because I'm like, oh, if I make a product that uh, is something you want to learn, you'll buy it. Um, that's, That's not what it is because my goal is to help you. And if I'm just making stuff that would help me, well, yeah, maybe it'll help a percentage of the people. But I know that my audience wants to learn about time management. I know that that's something that they talk about often. It's questions. It's always showing up in the Facebook group. Um, It's always showing up in in different places. Um, I know that that's something that my audience struggles with. And so if I can help them with that, then I'm fulfilling my why. And if I'm just putting out, you know, random content, or if I'm putting out content based on, um, you know, keyword metrics, or to get higher in the rankings in Google, you know, like, that's not really accomplishing what I'm what I'm trying to do here. Absolutely. Um, So that's my why. And that's how it really has changed. not only my business itself, but it really has changed the way I operate as a founder. Um, It's made it much easier for me to build things that I know are gonna have an impact. And, And that makes me happy because I know I'm fulfilling my purpose then. Hmm, I love that. And I know that this is something that you've studied for a really long time and you really are applying it really effectively. It's helping you to make better decisions, not only in your brand and your business, um, but it's helping you to help others to do the same. So my, my next question is how can you, because that's, that's essentially what you are producing. And that's something that you are equally passionate about. So how can you in the Armpreneur Academy help others find their wire? And then if you could tell us a little bit more about, again, how the why is different than just being passionate or just putting a few extra dollars in your bank. You know, I know that we talked about the celery test, but really specifically for some some yarnpreneurs, how it's different and how it can really make a difference. Yeah, well, I I think, and, and this just reminded me, um, this is not answering your question, but I'll, I'll <laughs> that's fine. Um, 
stick to the script. No. <laughs> I remember, I remember the first time I read, I read Start With Why. I just remember this. I totally forgot about it because I've actually been like knee we'll deep in now. why, mm -hmm. <laughs> in, mm -hmm. in why juice for so long. Um, I actually remember reading it the first time and thinking, this is stupid juju. This, this isn't real. This won't really make a difference. There was a part of me that was like, yeah, that's cool. Like I understand. I get how like getting closer to like what you're supposed to be doing. Like, yeah, I, I get it. But eh, it's not really going to work. Like, it can't really transform a business the way he's saying it can. That's it did seem it. very far-fetched. <laughs> it did seem very far-fetched. Yeah. I just remember thinking about that. And now thinking back, I'm like, what? The I was nuts. I was nuts. And, and I get that. Like, people need to come around to it. You definitely need to come around to it in your own time. And one of the things is it's really not going to work if you don't believe it's going to work. Right, it's really not going to do any, anything for you if you don't believe it's going to do something for you. Because when you believe, then you actually do the things that make it work. And if you don't believe, you're not going to do the things that will make it work. If that and makes we sense. can give so many very simplistic examples as well, because the book gave simplistic exa examples, but then it gives very large scale examples. Like for example, Pizza Hut sells pizza. You know, you, you're not going to go there to buy shoes or whatever else the market might be interested that week, CDs, or, you know, it doesn't make sense. Like if, if they're, if Pizza Hut is looking at Amazon and saying, oh, well they do, like, look what they sell. They do a really yeah. good job selling X, Y, and Z. It, it doesn't work. And I know that that sounds ridiculous for me too, to parallel what Pizza Hut does. But it's basically the same thing. But it's, it, it, like. And, and I love bringing it down to this level because, um, and this is why I wanted to ask you this question, because so many people in the yarn industry, let's just say you sell made to order things. Let's just blanket everybody and it doesn't matter if it's knit or crochet or felting or anything. Let's just say we're all in that same category. Or let's really distill it down fine too. Let's say I sell crochet hats and just you sell crochet hats. Why I sell hats is going to be different from why you sell hats. And therefore, we might make different products. We might present them in a different way. And so that's what I find so invigorating about this is I'm not going to look to you and say, just tell me how to sell my hats because there could be some promotions that we might do the same. But why we're doing it is going to dictate how we do it and where we do it and when we do it. And the audience is going to pick up on that. And I think yes. that's... That's what can be really powerful about this is not only will you be functioning differently, but the audience picks up on it. They, they understand because your messaging will be different. Your branding will be different and everything is going to be cohesive and consistent to the point yes. where it is very obvious. And again, it goes back to if I'm looking at your business, I should be able to kind of figure out your why. Like I, I should be able to understand why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. um, because it should be shouted from everything that you do. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what people need to understand once they've figured out their why. So once you actually know what it is, you know, you have to do those things that translate it into all of the actions that you take. Absolutely. So, uh, and I, I ask the question again because question. I totally got distracted. I <laughs> so how can you help others with the yarn preneur, yarn preneur Academy? How can you help them find their why in ways that again are different than just being passionate or just putting a few extra bucks in your, in your, in your wallet? Yeah. So we do a few things uh, at the Yarnpreneur Academy. We also do a few things at the Yarnpreneur Society, which is, you know, the public side of the business, the, mm -hmm. you know, community end of it. Um, we have what I call the golden circle course. Um, and the, your why is just one part of your golden circle. It's the center. Um, so there's two other rings outside of that. And the golden circle cor course walks you through not only um, how to find your why, which is obviously in the middle, but how to find your how and your what. And all of those things provide you with a very well-rounded foundation um, again, to inform everything you do as a business. Um, 
So there's a free version of the Golden Circle course uh, that people can find on our website, yarnpreneur.com. And we've got a link in the notes too. Um, yes. <laughs> and so we also do the same course is required for new members of the Yarnpreneur Academy. So if you're coming in and you haven't taken it before, if you haven't taken the free version yet, um, we don't, I say required, we don't force people to take it, uh, but we really, really, really strongly encourage people to take the Golden Circle course first because it's the first part, part in what we call your success path. Yes. Um, so that we feel provides the foundation for everything that comes after. And I am of the mind that if you don't have your golden circle in place and you try to go building the rest of your business, you are going to stumble. You're going to falter. You're going to make it harder on yourself. Um, I think, you know, having, un having an understanding of what's going on in here means that you can actually, you know, you can inhabit success out there. Yes. And I know that sounds a little like, um, but I, I truly believe that if you don't have an innate understanding and a feeling of who you are and what you're doing and why you're doing it and why you exist, why you're even bothering to spend time on this, um, you need that before anything else comes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. I love that, you know, we're shedding light on this topic, especially in the yarn industry, because, you know, in, in my very small circle of, of the crochet world, there are people that are starting today for the first time who, who I connect with. And there are people that have been in this industry for longer than I have. And it seems that so many times, so many people, um, they're looking to each other for what do I do next? What's the next biggest thing? Or YouTube works well for you. I'm going to do the same thing. Or video works well. I'm going to do the same thing. So they're thinking about the what and they're thinking about the how. And that's what the golden circle is all about. If you're constantly always thinking about what and how and not why, not only are you not going to be personally fulfilled because you're not creating a business that you can be satisfied with, but you're always going to be looking to carbon copy what somebody else is doing. And again, the entire reason starting with why is so important is that if you want to create a business, a long-term business that has long-term success and long-term strategies, then you have to start with why. And that is why so many businesses, especially yarn businesses, they will fail or they are failing. Because yeah, absolutely. Because people don't know why they're doing what they do. They know what and they can figure out how, but and it turns no, into no, a no. band-aid game. We were yes. talking about this the other day too, um, for something else. But you know, um, you know, we're talking about looking to other people for what am I going to do next? What am I going to do yeah. next? You know, video is working for them. YouTube is working for them. Instagram is working for them. Let me just go over there. Go over there. And all of those things are just band-aids. You yes. know, you're sitting over here being like, I need more traffic. I need more sales. How do I get that? Well. Someone else is getting it through YouTube. Well, someone else is getting it through Pinterest. Well, someone, and then you're like, all right, let me take that. And all you're doing is slapping a bandaid on the fact that, you know, you don't have a real true strategy in place for getting traffic and sales. And that's what the success path is for um, in the academy. You know, we literally teach you how to build a strategy that will bring you traffic and sales. And those are not the only things you need. Um, there's 12 courses in the success path. And mm -hmm. I say that without all of them, you're, there's something you're going to falter somewhere. Absolutely. You know, you need, it's like putting a brick wall together. You need all the bricks. You can't just leave some out. Right. Um, you know, I think if we think about truly building a successful business, something that you can count on, you want to make sure it's stable. You want to make sure you can predict, that you can understand, and more than that, that you can understand why you've had success if you've had it, right? So if you do something and it works really well, you need to know why. Yeah. Otherwise, you can't do it again. <laughs> no, and that's you know? the whole, yeah, that's the whole point to this, absolutely. So I, I think... Like I get a little like ranty and I'm like, yes, <laughs> success path, blueprint, 
Golden Circle. I love it. I love it. Well, I, for everyone listening, either live or on the replay, we do have a link on this whole golden circle concept. And I do hope that this whole why concept um, help gives, it, it will give you a better path. You know, it does take a little bit of figuring out to do, but Jess really does have a great program to help you figure out why you are in business because you, you may just, it's, it's there. It's just, you need some undigging and then you, you, you've got a little bit of undigging to do. And then Jess is going to help you not only bold letter it, but she's going to help you frame it so that you, you have it to look to every single day. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally, I actually, that is one of the things I recommend in the golden circle course is that you print it out and you put it somewhere that you can see it because see, it how did I know that? <laughs> it needs to be a visual, you know, reminder, especially in the beginning, especially if you're still getting used to the entire concept of yeah. having a why and using it to dictate the things you do in your business. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know what I love about this topic too, is we literally had, this is the first episode we've ever done where there are zero questions from the audience because they didn't even know what direction we were going to go in. And they had, they had no clue what we were going to say today. So I really, really hope that you guys, after you watch this episode today, you click on that link, you go through this, this course that, that Jess has, because finding out why you're doing what you're doing is going to help you dictate what or or how you do it and where you do it and 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 what that looks like and it's going to give you confidence in executing that so just thank you so much for for coming on and chatting about this today it really is just such a revolutionary topic and one that i really hope is is going to become so much more widespread than it is now no thank you i i agree i hope more people kind of adopt it as well and that's you know my my personal mission now um, because of my why, I have to help other people find their why. <laughs> so I had lots of fun. Thank you. Good. Oh, good. I'm so glad. And we can't wait to hear after you guys go through, because I know you're going to want to go through this. I know you're going to want to experience this. We would love for you guys to come back to our Facebook group or to the Armpreneur Society or Academy and tell us what your why is, or even if you want to type it into the comments section, uh, just so people can get shed some light on this conversation and see how others are are applying it and finding their why so we'd love to see that yeah definitely all right well please join us on facebook uh again to post your why um we would love to see that spark some conversations on that not only that but to vote for our next featured episode we typically have a, a poll available or we ask questions uh because we'd like to feature um themes that that speak to to you guys in the yarn industry in the yarn world in your yarn life so please join us over there to do that um you can find our facebook group in the show notes today uh remember today's episode is sponsored in part by you wonderful beautiful amazing viewers so please check out our yarn life swag shop to pick up a token tea tote or mug today again every purchase you make there is going to help us create more great content have more great episodes and have even more amazing guests on our show like just today <laughs> you can find that shop link in the in the show notes section too um, and again, thanks to uh, also the Yarnpreneur Academy for sponsoring this episode as well today for co-sponsoring. Um, and we do have some special resources for anyone looking to turn their yarn hobby into a business. Um, something that we've talked about in the past is also the seven things every yarnpreneur should know. We've got that link there as well. Uh, and that is again from Jess and our friends at yarnpreneur.com. So for those free downloads and resources, please find the links in our show notes today. And that's it for episode 10. Thanks everyone for joining this episode in the Yarn Life Show for your daily dose of fiber. And we'll see you again uh, next episode. Peace guys. Bye.